side. It's a Mercedes 1-2 in Russia that puts them firmly in contention to clinch the Constructors' Championship next time out at the Japanese Grand Prix. Move away from Singapore to Russia, round 16 of the 2019 season at the Sochi Autodrome, site of the 2014 Winter Olympics. It's a remarkable venue, it is one of the most unique on the calendar. Some races here have been less interesting than others, but we do tend to get a cracker. In terms of the calendar, it's stop number 16 on this 2019 calendar. Two weeks time and we're in Japan for the Japanese Grand Prix in Suzuka. Another two weeks in Mexico City. We'll return as we start the final four races. Then a week later, we're in the United States for the American Grand Prix. Two weeks later, mid-November, it's the Brazilian Grand Prix. And right at the end of November, and on the first day of December and Christmas, we get an early Christmas presents ourselves. But we have to say goodbye to Formula One 2019 the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. In terms of the Drivers' Championship, well, Lewis Hamilton is dominating that one, 296 points to Valtteri Bottas and 231. Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen are level on points, tied for third on 200. Sebastian Vettel, with that victory in Singapore, has closed that gap on 194 points. The battle now seems to be for second in the title, if Valtteri Bottas starts to slip back. Pierre Gasly and the Toro Rosso, after switching back from Red Bulls and sixth, he looks to hold that unless Carlos Sainz can jump up. He's only 11 points behind. Alexander Albon and Daniel Ricciardo are in a battle as well for ninth. And tenth as well goes to Danny Kvyat, who's tied with Nico Hülkenberg on 33 points. Everyone from Danny Ricciardo down from Kvyat, Hülkenberg, Norris, Raikkonen, Perez are in a battle for ninth and tenth place in the championship. Lance Stroll, Kevin Magnussen are in a battle for 15th. Roman Grosjean is on 8 points. Antonio Giovinazzi is on 4 points after that top 10 finish in Singapore. Robert Kibitz is still on 1 point. And George Russell, the only driver not to score. In terms of the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are dominating and are due to be crowned the champions in two races' time in what should be Mexico on 527 points, Ferrari on 394 and Red Bull on 289. It's the battle mainly between Renault, Toro Rosso, Racing Point and Alfa Romeo and Haas that we're all watching. That midfield incredibly close. Renault leading on 67 points, Toro Rosso 55, Racing Point 46, Alfa Romeo is 35 and the outside chance is Haas F1 on 26 points. One point though still is for Williams. It's round 16 of the 2019 Formula 1 calendar, the Russian Grand Prix at the Sochi Autodrome, and it should be, hopefully, a great weekend ahead. Welcome to Russia. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Grand Review podcast for the 2019 VTB Russian Grand Prix. Now, usually in Russia, we have a quiet race, not something that everybody will talk about, but I've got a feeling this one might just live on. Ferrari having three races on the bounce, two with Leclerc and one with Sebastian Vettel. This was the race where we all agree that their relationship started to break down. Sebastian Vettel, like with Maldi 21, ignoring the team orders to let Charles Leclerc through. When he did, he was in the pit lane and unfortunately Vettel retired for the first time in a number of seasons with an internal combustion issue and a Kerr's related battery failure. And of course, that meant that Charles Leclerc never got the free air to run. It was all tricky though, and it all got underway on Friday in the first practice session for the Russian Grand Prix. Here's the report. <coughs> Ferrari were denied a 1-2 in the Friday's first practice session for the 2019 Russian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen split the leaders of Charles Leclerc and third place Sebastian Vettel, Red Bull, we're just 0.082 off of Leclerc at the finish. 
Leclerc, adamant that he has learned from Singapore, where he lost control over the radio, after that controversial decision that to swap the drivers was ignored. But he was the top of the session, a 134.462, half an hour remaining. And he was ultimately five tenths of a second quicker than Sebastian Vettel. The top three setting their quickest times on soft tyres. But Mercedes opted for longer stints on the mediums. As a result of their tyre choices, they finished fourth and fifth, led by Valtteri Bottas. The top five, Leclerc, Verstappen, Vettel, Bottas and Hamilton. Moving on. Hamilton won last year's race here in Sochi, of course. But we're all waiting as he was the first one to test the runoff area at turn two, where the bollards could have created a slalom effect for drivers who veer off the track. Meanwhile, Bottas, he ended the session before the checker flag with an unusual rear ring failure. DRS was related from his W10. Red Bull's Alexander Albon was the slowest of the top six, a second off the pace. He, along with FP1 runner-up Max Verstappen, will receive a five-place grid penalty as Honda have changed his internal combustion engine mention for the Japanese Grand Prix. Renault resurging after the summer break with particularly strong results at Monza, were fastest in the midfield with Nico Hulkenberg P7, followed by Daniel Ricciardo who backed into his uh, car into Turn 5, causing a stoppage shortly before the end of the session. It was an interesting session for McLaren as well. They were absent from the midfield battle. However, Lando Norris was 16th, completing a long stint on the hard tyres. Carlos Sainz opting to do so on the mediums. He finished P11. Another driver to take a penalty for the race is Toro Rosso's Pierre Gasly, with a brand new internal combustion engine unit. And his teammate Danny Kvyat at home soil was down at the back, having replaced all of the power unit components by the battery. It was an interesting session. The two Williamses once again end up at the back of the field, but did Charles Leclerc top here in Russia after Ferrari have won the last three on the bounce? Let's take a look at the times for free practice one. <coughs> so Charles Leclerc was fastest on a 134.462. Max Verstappen second on 134.544. Sebastian Vettel in third on 135.005. Valtteri Bottas in 4th at 135.198. Lewis Hamilton 5th at 135.411. Alexander Albon 6th at 135.484. Nico Hülkenberg in 7th at 135.740. Now it's Daniel Ricciardo in P8 at 136.287. Sergio Perez 9th at 136.321. And then we get Romain Grosjean rounding on the top 10 at 136.516. Carlos Sainz is 11th at 136.523. Then it's Pierre Gasly, 12th for 136.538. Kevin Magnussen, 13th for 136.596. Lance Stroll, 14th for 136.714. Kimi Raikkonen, 15th for 136.770. Lando Norris, 16th for 136.844. Antonio Giovinazzi, 17th for 137.328. George Russell, 18th for 138.520. Danny Kvyat, 19th for 138.550. And Robert Kubica, rounding out the grid on 138.7. A close session then, Ferrari with Charles Leclerc topping the way after their victory in Singapore. Second was the Red Bull of Max Verstappen with Sebastian Vettel in third, Mercedes must charge Haider. But still, what was going to happen in free practice too? Let's take a look at the report now. <coughs> Red Bull haven't always run strong here at Sochi, but they looked pretty strong on Friday as Max Verstappen set an impressive pace in the second practice for the Russian Grand Prix. Just a fraction off the leading time in free practice one, Verstappen swapped places with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc in the afternoon, clocking a 133.162, three tenths quicker than the two-time race winner, Charles Leclerc. Mercedes? Well, Valtteri Bottas, who won in Sochi in 2017, was leading the charge, but he was three quarters of a second adrift in third. Mercedes did their low fuel soft run ties on slightly higher fuels relating to their rivals of Red Bull and Ferrari, explaining their lack of pace early on. Lewis Hamilton, the championship leader, over a tenth slower than teammate Valtteri Bottas in fifth. Sebastian Vettel, winner last time out in Italy and Singapore, making a mistake on his first run in Sector 2 and running out of tie line for his second. The top five were Verstappen, Leclerc, Bottas, Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel in fifth. 
a typical FP2 team spent the second half of the session running the high fuel low to gather data for Sunday's race. And the early signs suggested that Mercedes were looking very strong. They have won every single Grand Prix here ever in Sochi, so it looks to be a good sign. Lance Stroll made it in two racing points in the top nine, with McLaren's Lando Norris rounding out the top ten here at the Sochi Autodrome. Red Bull have just been pleased with Verstappen's exploit. There were frustration on the other side of the garage. Alexander Albon spending much of the session up on the jacks. He failed to get a proper soft tyre run, ending up 11th overall. It's an interesting one. Mercedes have never been beaten here, but so far on Friday, it's belonged to their rivals. Ferrari in FP1, Red Bull in FP2. What would Saturday bring? Who knows? Let's take a look at the times for free practice too. <laughs> Max Verstappen tops the second session then on the 133.162. Charles Leclerc second for Ferrari at 133.497. Valtteri Bottas in third at 133.808. Lewis Hamilton in fourth on a 133.960. Sebastian Vettel rounding out the top five on a 134.201. Then we get Pierre Gasly P6 on a 134.971. Sergio Perez is seventh on 134.998. Nico Hulkenberg eighth on 135.026. Lance Stroll ninth on 135.176. And then we get Alexander Albon in the top 10 for 135.216. Lando Norris is 11th for 135.223. Then we get Danny Kvyat in 12th for 135.337. Kevin Marcus in 13th for 135.351. Danny Ricciardo 14th for 135.370. Kimi Raikkonen once again 15th for 135.374. Roman Grosjean 16th for 135.593. Carlos Sainz 17th for 135.653. Then we get a Tenere Giovinazzi in 18th for 136.004. 19th for George Russell at 136.785. And the second session running this weekend, Robbie Kibitza in 20th on a 137.838. Overnight rain proved to be an interesting sceptical because when third practice got underway for the Russian Grand Prix, it was all change. Ferrari versus Mercedes and Red Bull. It was going to be a lot closer than it was on Friday. Let's take a look at the third practice report. Right, let's get on to the third practice report then. As we saw, it was a dominating performance from the two Ferraris. Charles Leclerc topping on 132.733, Sebastian Vettel in second, Lewis Hamilton third, Valtteri Bottas fourth, and Max Verstappen in fifth place. Now, Ferrari continuing their pace from free practice one yesterday. This time, Charles Leclerc topping it and with a faster time, 132.733, absolutely dominating uh, the situation so far. It's looking really, really good for them going into qualifying as well. But, and also, just a quick reminder. Red Bull would have been up there, especially with Max Verstappen, but they spent most of the session running on the medium compound tyre. So when they did swap over to the soft compound, Verstappen on his first run ran over the kerb at turn two, launched the car, and they couldn't get any more into it. And then he had a spin at the end, damaged the rear wing, had to come back into the pit lane. So it wasn't really a good session for him. Uh, Bottas as well, fifth place, 1.5 seconds, fourth place, sorry, 1.5 seconds off the pace. Expect that to change as well later on. Romain Grosjean. Uh, split the Red Bulls as well. He was sixth for Haas. He's ahead of Alexander Albon, who, like teammate Verstappen, will drop five grid spots as well as uh, Alexander Albon, Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly, all with five-place grid penalties for new power unit ICE. But Danny Kvyat will start right at the back of the grid. And he had problems as well. A virtual safety car called for Danny Kvyat after he had issues in the third practice session. Another problem with the car. Just like yesterday, he looks like he's going to not take part in qualifying and will start at the back of the grid. But if he doesn't take part in qualifying, he'll have to start from the pit lane. So not good for the home driver. As we've already said, Sergio Perez also had a car problem. He spent most of the hour in the garage. He did emerge late on, locked up at 10.13. He ended up P15. The forecast for rain never materialised. However, it could make an appearance in qualifying. And this is the reason why. Rain coming in will affect the end of qualifying as well as the Formula 2 race. And tomorrow for the race, it looks to be raining as well. Who can tell? Let's take a look at the times for free practice three. <laughs> 
So Charlotte Claire tops the third practice session at 132.733. Sebastian Vitale second at 133.049. Lewis Hamilton third at 133.129. Valtteri Bottas is fourth on a 133.354. Max Verstappen is fifth on a 134.227. Romain Grosjean sixth on a 134.308. Alexander Albon seventh on a 134.371. Nico Hulkenberg eighth at 134.421. Lando Norris ninth at 134.527. And then we see Kevin Magnussen running out the top 10 on 134.546. Pierre Gasly is 11th on a 134.564. Danny Ricciardo 12th on a 134.586. Carlos Sainz 13th on a 134.607. Antonio Giovinazzi 14th on 134.766. Sergio Perez 15th on 134.860. Lance Stroll 16th on 134.898. Kimi Raikkonen 17th on 135.714. George Russell 18th on a 136.011. Danny Kvyat 19th on a 136.081. He will not take part in qualifying. And Robert Kibitzer in 20th on a 136.942. Perhaps one of the most important qualifiers of the year as Mercedes go after their sixth consecutive Constructors' Championship. Were they going to be beaten at a circuit they've never lost a race at by Ferrari? Or could Red Bull spring a surprise? But they won't start on pole, remember, as both the Red Bulls and the Toro Rossos have got grid penalties. So it was all down to Ferrari and Mercedes in qualifying. <laughs> Right, let's start then with the qualifying report and go through what happened in qualifying one. Only 19 drivers made an appearance in the first part of qualifying because Danny Kvyat will have to start from the pit lane in today's race after taking yet another internal combustion engine after a failure in free practice three. But it was made worse, though, as Alexander Albon crashed uh, down at turn 13, locked the rear tyre, took too much speed into the corner, round he went into the back of the barrier. So that brought out the red flag and about a 20-minute delay to the whole procedure of qualifying. Ferrari sent Vettel and Leclerc out on the medium tyres, the only team to do so in the first session. Leclerc set a competitive time, but, Le but Vettel found himself in traffic and was in the elimination zone when the red flag came out. He was able to go back out onto the circuit, get the time and get safely into qualifying three. Ferrari forced he used a set of soft tyres with that one. Raikkonen made a mess of the final corner and doing the hard work he's done in these first two sectors and that put him uh, down the order. But in the elimination zone, we had Raikkonen, Russell, Kibitza, Albon and Kvyat. So really, the only surprise there was Albon pulling into the barrier. But at least we know that two of the people with penalties start at the back. On to qualifying two then, Mercedes decided to play a different factor, not qualifying on the soft compound tyre, instead putting Bottas and Hamilton for the first half of the race on the longer duration medium compound tyre, which is about a five-tenth of a lap slower overall. So they're going to start the first in on the medium compound. Mercedes failed to match Ferrari so far this weekend, so that's why they had to decide if we can't beat them in qualifying, we'll have to beat them in the race. Leclerc uh, set a pace uh, once more with a tenth quicker than teammate Sebastian Vettel. So Ferrari dominated so far this weekend. Grosjean had a supreme run, but knocked out were Gasly, Perez, Giovinazzi, Magnussen and Stroll. On to qualifying three then, and it was pretty much decided on the first runs. Charles Leclerc taking his fourth pole position, out qualifying the field by about three tenths of a second. He is on a roll. Ever since he's been back for the summer break, it's been pole after pole after pole for Leclerc. Hamilton lines up second on the grid. Vettel, however, was second, but demoted back to third. Hamilton had a fantastic last lap. In the last sector especially, just rocketed him up, splitting the two Ferraris. But for the first time since 2000, uh, it's been Ferrari's first four poles in a row by one driver. And that was Michael Schumacher, the last man to do it. Now the last man to do it is Charles Leclerc. Sainz lines up fifth as well. Norris had appeared quicker than Sainz in early qualifying, but it was a pretty much a slow third qualifying. Let's take a look then at the grid for the 2019 Russian Grand Prix. So Charles Leclerc lines up a pole position for the sixth time this year and for the fourth race running alongside him is Lewis Hamilton. Row two, Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Bottas. Row three, Carlos Sainz, Nico Hulkenberg. Row four, Landon Norris, Roman Grosjean. Row five, Max Verstappen with a five place group penalty alongside Danny Ricciardo. Row six, Sergio Perez, Antonio Giovinazzi. 
Row 7, Kevin Manson, Lance Stroll. Row 8, Kimi Raikkonen and Pierre Gasly with a 5 place group penalty. Row 9, George Russell, Alexander Albon, 5 place group penalty. Row, and in row 10, we see Robbie Kubica 19th and Danny Kvyat in 20th for required to start at the back of the grid for a new power unit. But Danny Kvyat will start from the pit lane. Once again, it was Charles Leclerc on pole position. Alongside him was Lewis Hamilton. Right behind Leclerc, though, his teammate Sebastian Vettel with Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly, along with Danny Kvyat and Alexander Albon, all displaced on the grid. The Russian Grand Prix of 2019, what could be a very crucial race in the history of Formula One in terms of what could go forward with driver relationships and certainly it could put a nail in the coffin for Sebastian Vettel's relationship with Ferrari. A crucial race of the season, though. Your commentators, Joshua Birch and Ian Birch. The Russian Grand Prix, race 16, lap one. Ferrari have a chance here to do something that has never been done. Beat Mercedes at their favourite track. Action in Russia. Good start for the Williams of George Russell. But look at that. He's got the jump. And look at that round the outside. Great start for Carlos Sainz. And Vettel dives to the inside of Charles Leclerc. Into the first breaking spot. Into turn one. It's Vettel leading with Leclerc second. Hamilton third. Sainz fourth. Bottas fifth. Lando Norris in trouble. The two house cars making contact. Verstappen on the order. Albon getting up. Great start though from the Williams of George Russell. Up the inside. Danny Ricciardo trying to make a move on large Stroll. Round the Yeah, um, the two Haas cars were avoiding a Renault, so it could have been contact with one of the Haas. Safety car! Safety, safety car! car deployed. And that but was great, nasty. Great driving and great start by Sebastian Vettel from third place. Right, He forced Hamilton, Hamilton wide, and then when Leclerc was trying to prevent Hamilton getting past... Grosjean's in the wall! Grosjean! out as well. Now he's down in 20th. I was wondering where he'd done. He must have made contact. That is a What's big that? off. That's What's a contact, that yeah. car that had contact with Ricardo. I and, believe. And, and then has damaged something. And later on, because they're in different places, aren't they? Yeah. Well, let's take another look. On board with Grosjean then. Coming into turn Grosjean four. Is at, is oh. four and so, hang on. What happened there? Because Grosjean got hit from the back by an alpha. And Ricardo yeah. just lost it all by himself. Unless Ricardo, unless, uh, Ricardo got yeah, tagged. The, when that, that first, in that first incident... Yeah. Right, in the first incident, Ricardo's going to get back to the pits, hopefully. And he should be able to catch the back of the safety right. car and not go a lap but down. In that first incident where the two the, the two Haas cars went wide, yeah. they were avoiding a Renault. I'm sure of it. I saw the yellow stripe. Replay. Let's take a look at the start. So look, watch this. A great start from Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton didn't get a great start. Look at the McLarens. They got a lightning getaway. And Carlos Sainz was right there with Hamilton. He was into third place at one point. The two Ferraris go side by side. Vettel has the inside line into turn two. The first real breaking spot. And now is where the Constantina starts to happen. They're all bunched up. The two house cars, Magnus and Grosjean, go off the track and fight together. Watch your board with Vettel. Optimum revs away he goes, gets the tour advantage from Charles Leclerc that Hamilton didn't have as he was alongside nobody but a great getaway, already dealt with Hamilton, pulls to the inside, deals with Leclerc and I think now he's got a victory under his belt, Dad, Vettel's feeling a bit more feisty. Yeah, also it's, it's well, if you saw there that um, it's clear that Lewis went to go block um, had to break and that's why Lewis lost the things because Lewis can't afford um, if he's going to lap 30 on these tyres, he can't afford to scuff them on the opening start down to Rick in turn. turn two. Yeah, and he has got this advantage throughout the race, of course. But, so he, in the end, the um, driver in him. Oh, right, can jump the start. Right, can jump the start. Right then, definitely. Fifth light came on and he dropped the clutch. So whether he couldn't see the fifth light with the halo, I'm not too sure. But he dropped that clutch. Big 
time before we'd even gone. Lap three. It's called, it, the, the safety car is in, the restart is on, and Carlos Sainz got caught out there uh, with the restart. Vettel has gone to no overtaking to the start finish line, which is there, and the Russian Grand Prix is back underway on lap four of 53. It's Vettel, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Bottas. Then we get Norris, uh, Perez, Verstappen, and who's going to have the advantage to turn two? Lando Norris looking at the back. Meanwhile, that's on the inside. Kevin Magnussen getting a move on Nico Hulkenberg. Nicely done. And Hulkenberg once again, remember, involved in uh, turn two contact. But this time, he wasn't out of the race on the opening lap. Albon up to 15th. And Albon may be up a few more positions as well. Wow, Verstappen trying to make the move on Perez very late as Albon has been in the background round turn three. I uh, was also trying to move on Keanu, Kimi Raikkonen. Lap six. Sebastian will let you by next lap. Wow! 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 As under investigation, Kimi Raikkonen for a jump start. But wow! Wow, Dad! They're gonna they're gonna do the swap this early in the race. This is what I say. That since they haven't done this, it's always been about the team since yeah. Michael Schumacher. Since they realised that they were losing races because they were doing it for Michael Schumacher. Right? Schumacher wasn't always capable of winning. No. But Barrichello was always, fed, uh, unless he was out, Barrichello and whoever else was uh, his partner Massive. always had to give way. And yeah. it, it's, it, it costs them races. And they're, they're, they're doing it again with the That's young kid. Right, I would have got him anyway. So Vettel wants to break away and get a gap to Mercedes because his stop is lap 17. He's stopping a lap earlier than Charles Leclerc, according to the prediction. So they've got to really be careful here. Lap 15. Done it again. So <laughs> Done it again. A one. There it's Hamilton. I have a sec. Hulkenberg back right round the outside. Getting the move. Donald Sergio Perez. A little lock up into turn 13. That was brilliant. And for the first time this race, and Mercedes has got the fastest lap. Hamilton's turned on the wick. At 138.533, he's actually beaten Vettel's fastest lap by one thousandth of a second. Vettel's last lap, a 138.534. Dad. That bears out what I'm saying. Because clearly, Mercedes now know that Vettel has worked out what they're doing. And that the situation now is that Mercedes have adapted what they're doing and they're going to risk their tyres a bit by putting in a few fast laps to keep on the end of that train. Lap 22. Hello. Which one's this going to be? No, it's, it's Leclerc. It's, it's, yeah, it's, Leclerc. it's Leclerc. And it is Leclerc. Leclerc in the pit lane. Lap 23 of 53 and Charles Leclerc is the first of the top six to pit. And in now comes Charles Leclerc. Hamilton goes to second. And this is going to have to be crucial. Mediums go on. Oh, it was soft front, Dad. And then there's 2.5 seconds. It looks slow on the front. And they're not scrubbed. They are brand new. Leclerc doesn't like brand new. Lap 24. Albon trying to get through. Goes to the inside on Pierre Gasly. Gasly goes to high side. Gets onto the marbles. Cuts back into turn four. Albon leaves in room. Goes right around the outside. They're side by side and he gets through. What a great move from Alexander Albon to get through from the Pierre Gasly, the man he replaced at Red Bull. Fantastic move. Lap 26. Out goes Danny Ricciardo the opening round contact, the Honey Badger is out of the Russian Grand Prix. Into the pit lane comes Sebastian Vettel on that 26 of 53. And this is getting close. The Claire set the fastest first sector. Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the Russian Grand Prix as across the line. Hamilton leads, Vettel second. And now it's gonna be a super, super, super stop. On go the medium tires, bolt on away. And where's the Claire? Is Leclerc going to get past Vettel in the pit stop? This is going to be crucial. Three seconds stop. It was slow. Let's hear from Leclerc. Bottas. And we need you to push. Push this lap push. And there is Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc takes third place away from Sebastian Vettel. And inherits what will be the lead of the race when the two Mercedes pits. Wow. Ferrari swapped their drivers in the pit lane. 
10 lap shootouts. Lap 28. And Vettel's stopping! Sebastian Vettel is stopping! He's got no key! The car has failed! And Sebastian Vettel, with a reliability problem, is out of the Russian Grand Prix on lap 28 of 53. Wow! Looked bad coming out of the pit lane that the car was going into anti-stall. And on the first lap out, he is out of the Grand Prix. Virtual safety car is going to be initiated in about three seconds time. Sebastian Vettel is out of the Russian Grand Prix. It's up to Charles Leclerc to now get the victory. And that car's electric, he had to jump. This might be a red flag situation because I think that car's gone live, Dad. Yeah, I think so too. They can't yeah, touch it. Said, when he said, I have a K's problem, I have no K's, that is the battery, isn't it? That's the yeah. regeneration unit. The K's, the energy and part uh, of it. Uh, well, free pit stop for Magnus and Stroll. Into the pit lane comes Kvyat as well. Albon staying out. So Albon now joins Verstappen in the pit lane. But I think they might have to deploy the full safety car here. Honestly, because if that car's electric, they can't touch it. Same as in, if you watch Moto E, they can't touch those bikes if, it, those bikes if they go into Melbourne. Down. Mayhem in the pit lane. Look at that. Norris up into eighth place with force with their with their racing point pitting now. It's giving the advantage back. And it's not a long walk back to the panic, is it, for Sebastian Vettel? He's already in. And I wonder if Natalie Pinkham is gonna run and get a word with him. As into the pit Here lane. To Lewis. So perfect time. They may as well double stack. It's a perfect time. Why can it in as well? Uh, also Giovinazzi, so they're double stacking. They are gonna st double stack the two Mercedes. This is worked out perfectly for them. It's worked out terribly for Leclerc because Leclerc was hoping to capitalize on their pit stop. Bottas pits now. Bottas. And there's Bottas in now. So Hamilton's gone on to a brand new set of soft compound tires. Sorry, they're not they're not new. They're the ones that did the qualifying three run yesterday. Today, both of those Mercedes now on used, scrubbed, soft compound tires. Lap 29. The virtual safety car is ending, and Verstappen's pitting. The track has gone green, and Verstappen's pitted. Not worked out good for him, has it? Albon's going to get him, or is he? No, no, he won't. No, Albon's 40 seconds behind, isn't he? But, uh, yeah, and pit lane, speed limit, and yellow it sector two. Yellow. Yeah, oh! And that's oh, George Russell. It's Georgie boy. For the second race running, George Russell crashes out. And that'll be a full safety car. He's got it heavy there. Obviously, he's he's, oh, he's uninjured because he's, he can get out of the car. I can see him moving. But that looks like a brake failure to me, Dad. And that's going to have to be a full safety car. Let's Lewis didn't look. want this. Oh, it's brake failure. Complete brake failure. And into yeah, the wall, Lewis, hard. Lewis didn't want this, obviously. Um... Uh, now a safety car will will reduce that gap for, to Leclerc. Safety Whereas car. He's got a five. Yeah, he's got five seconds. He's so he's he's still in the lead, Lewis. But um, do it. I know what Ferrari are doing. Ferrari are going to put Leclerc on a set of softs. Do you risk the it? The same. Do you risk it? I don't know. Yes, you do. That's now happened, and it's a double whammy for Williams. Robbie Kipitsa is out of the Grand Prix. That is their first double DNF of the season, Dad. And that ruins their 100% finish record with one car. Leclerc. Right. That has surprised me, because he's given up track position now to Bottas. That's ridiculous, because now, right... Yeah, and what tyres is he going to put on? Softs. He, he lost that. He lost that boundary. Ah, but he's gone on to scrub soft start. He yeah, likes these. He, will he get out before Verstappen? Uh, 42 seconds. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. There he is. Look, look there's Verstappen just coming to turn 15 now. So he's only lost track position to Bottas. But it's a Mercedes 1-2 yeah. at, a, a Mercedes one -two at a circuit where they've won every year. Lap 32. Lewis Hamilton controls the field as away we go on to the restart. Hamilton leads the way. Bottas, and look at that. Verstappen and Sainz still warming their tyres. Verstappen locks up as well. Coming to turn 15. And the Russian Grand Prix is go again. Down now towards turn one. Leclerc's got in the toe, Dad. So Leclerc in the toe might have the advantage of Bottas down in towards turn number two. It's not going to be DRS. It's just going to be
be on pure slipstream. He dives to the inside. Oh, he's making Bottas away, wasn't he? Can he get the run around turn three? Down towards turn four. Bottas. Bottas is, yeah. Bottas has got to be a, a barricade against letting him through. Lap 37. Uh, look at the midfield battle. That's really getting something now for the last point scoring position. Hulkenberg's going to get Stroll. Hulkenberg in the DRS pulls to the outside line. Stroll has to defend the inside. Look at the two Toro Rosses further back as well. Lunging up the inside. That's going to be a brave move. They nearly make contact. And Gasly has to go round the bollard. Comes back on the track. And there is Kimi Raikkonen who's got through. So this midfield battle for the teams, remember, as I said earlier, they are all within three points of each other so this this matters a lot for who is best of the rest not 53 Lewis Hamilton though what in Bahrain what in China what in Spain Monaco Canada and France what in Silverstone last victory in Hungary for the 82nd time and for the third time in Russia Lewis Hamilton exits the last corner for the first time since the summer break, takes victory and wins the Russian Grand Prix. And just to echo the start of the season, it's a Mercedes 1-2 in Russia that puts them firmly in contention to clinch the Constructors' Championship next time out at the Japanese Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc started on pole position, can't convert it to a victory after early squabbles with the teammate for Sebastian Vettel. Verstappen is fourth, and for the first time, Alexander Albon finishes in his highest position and finishes in fifth. A fourth win in Russia, an 82nd career victory. Lewis Hamilton on course to be champion of the world for the sixth time coming up in the next few races. Insane, insane. Next race, Japan. Lewis Hamilton wins the Russian Grand Prix. A very exciting race to win. I'm sure you can agree. So let's go through the driver ratings one by one from the Grand Prix which has proved so crucial as well. Lewis Hamilton, the victor. From, um, we give him a total of five points. It's been a great race and a great strategy from Mercedes yesterday. Uh, Marty Bottas in second, he gets four points. Charles Leclerc in third, he gets five because he should have been released ahead. Sebastian so Vettel didn't play the team order game. We sort of discussed that in commentary as well. It doesn't seem to be uh, a harmonious relationship anymore. or well, no more when we get to Japan, though exactly uh, what is going to happen with their relationship and I'm sure we'll talk about that a lot over the weekend. Dad once again will be joining me in the commentary box. Uh, Megan taking these two races off of course. Uh, same as Marty Brennan and David Coulthard actually. So the commentary uh, roulette sort of starts again doesn't it? Uh, I think only Jenny and Palmer is the one who stayed uh, on, in terms of commentary a lot. Uh, Max Verstappen in fourth place as well. Great charge up from where he was. So four points for him. Alexander Arbon in fifth after starting so far back. He gets a total of five points. What a great little charge he had all throughout the afternoon. Carlos Sainz, great start from him. He was right alongside Hamilton into third place at one point. He gets uh, three points. Sergio Perez gets three as well. Lando Norris as well gets a total of five points. Kevin Magnussen in ninth as well gets ten. And as well, Nico Hulkenberg gets four points as well. Looking down the table, well, we got Lance Stroll in P11 as well. At just outside the points, he was pretty much out of it all weekend. He only gets two points. Danny Kvyat, strong performance from him from the back of the green in the pit lane as well. He definitely gets three points. Kimi Raikkonen, two. Pierre Gasly, three. Giovinazzi in 15th place, the last of the finishers officially gets two points. Robert Kibitz are out. They pulled that car early. Uh, due to save battery life for future events. So Kubitz was actually running back, but two points for him. George Russell, second accident in a row, two races. He's been out of the race, and causing a crash in a safety car. He only gets two points, so was a brake failure, it looked like. Sebastian Vettel only gets one point. Unsportsmanlike behaviour, not playing by team orders, very much playing by his own orders. He only gets a point. And Daniel Ricciardo, opening like contact, contact with Antonio Giovinazzi, hint to Roman Grosjean, tried to continue, gets three points. A shame he couldn't. 
And then, of course, we get Roman Grosjean, who is not actually classified in the race results, but should be out of turn one. Disappointing, but he had a strong weekend as well. He gets two points. We'll wrap these up, of course, uh, for you. It's getting very close, actually, in terms of who is going to be victorious in our driver uh, statements, our driver point system for the driver rankings of the weekend. We'll have those all for you at the last race of the season in Abu Dhabi. We'll reveal who has won, unless anyone's been keeping score. Right now, two weeks' time until the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. It looks to be an absolute classic. We've got the Ferrari there. We've got Red Bull bringing all these engine upgrades at their home circuit for Honda engines, finally back into winning ways. We've got Mercedes, so dominant there, won every time in the hybrid era. It is going to be a great show, and it's another late-night one, but it's going to be worth it. The Japanese Grand Prix in two weeks' time, but right now, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes, all they need is 14 more points in Ferrari in Japan, and they are Constructors' champions for a sixth year running. And Lewis Hamilton can't clinch the title next time out in Japan, but can get one hand on it. Lewis Hamilton, 73 points clear in the championship after today's win. He wins for the first time since the Hungarian Grand Prix, and we'll be back in two weekends' time. It was all here, though. It's bye for now from Russia.